see the ShopRite group also talking about this. Yes, this is something that is now uh, has uh, retailers seriously worried. As uh, we heard from the Consumer Goods Council of South Africa, uh, you know, uh, nearly uh, over 600, uh, you know, uh, of those uh, shops have uh, been affected, and uh, there is a serious concern about food security in the country. And uh, this is about uh, the disruption of supply chains and the distribution centers that are located in various parts of Gauteng, some in KZN as well. So we spoke to Sid Vianello, uh, who. Um, is an independent uh, um, you know, a retail expert and he says that uh, there is a serious concern that if these continue any further there could be uh, some empty shelves on shops, uh, something that has um, already started in some parts uh, of uh, Gauteng but uh, he will, as he will say in this next clip, uh, the biggest uh, concern for retailers is on the bread and milk side. If uh, the country is unable to rest the situation right now, we might see, uh, you know, uh, the shortage of uh, fresh milk and bread in the coming days if the situation uh, continues. Let's take a listen. All the major DCs, um, or a lot of the food DCs, are based out in Midrand. The spa, the spa ones aren't the spa one. A spa have got two. They've got one um, in the northern part of um, uh, closer to Pretoria, and then they've got one um, near the um, near the uh, OR Tambo Airport in Boxburg. But the others are all located primarily out at Midrand. If those trucks are disrupted and they can't get from the uh, from the DC to the individual store. Well, then the stores are not going to get stock. And I think that is where the concern is. The concern is about the movement of goods from the factory, and factories are located all over Kauteng. And they may not necessarily be in Kauteng. I mean, the factories could be 50 kilometers out of Kauteng um, on the east or the west rand, but they're all feeding into the same DC. Milk, for instance, wouldn't, and bread wouldn't necessarily go through a DC. It would be delivered directly from the, from the bakery or from the dairy directly to the stores because it, it costs too much money to move it through a DC. And remember, milk and bread has a very short shelf life. There, the biggest concerns, once again, would be those trucks being disrupted on their way. And remember, we're now talking, we, we're now not talking of a truck that's carrying, let's call it five million rands worth of goods. We're now talking of a truck that's carrying 100,000 rands worth of bread. You can see, of course, live pictures of what's happened in one area of our business activity right now. Another news today, Kolani mining activity expanding, but below expectations. Below expectations, but in news just in one of the mines in case at Anacolia mine has just decided to uh, stop operations because of the disruptions that are going on. So you might think that uh, they are working underground and they're unaffected, but this sector is affected. But these are good results from the mining sector coming out of CSA that 21.9% uh, you know, year on year increase it was less than expected, but let's take a listen to what this means uh, for this particular sector going forward. When we compare it against uh, the previous month, we actually went backwards about three and a half percent. The mining industry is very, very dependent on what's happening internationally. Uh, it's also dependent on the RAND. Uh, unfortunately, a strong RAND uh, isn't good for our mining sector. Uh, so what we've seen over the last couple of months is the RAND continue to strengthen, which uh, uh, dampens uh, our mining sector a bit. But also there's been uh, a few COVID wave spikes internationally, and that puts a general dampener on uh, global need and demand for commodities. And as a direct result, our mines then export less uh, product. And then, Kalani, very quickly, I mean, in, Sta in, Mo in Mozambique, not in Standard Bank, in Mozambique, Standard Bank's been fined. Standard Bank is being uh, fined $4.6 million, allegedly, for fraudulent activity and manipulating and manipulation of the exchange rate. They're actually alleging that uh, the central bank there is alleging that two employees were involved in this fraudulent activity. So this is quite a, a huge, you know, uh, um, a fine. And we've heard this uh, sort of uh, allegations here at home uh, with their banks being alleged to have done the same a couple of years ago. But let's take a listen to what this means, and this could mean for the brink biggest bank on the African continent by assets. 
So the Central Bank in Mozambique has instituted a fine against Standard Bank in its country, and this was on the back of a conclusion um, after a, a physical search at the offices in Mozambique, um, where it was found that there was fo uh, foreign exchange manipulation. Um, two employees have also been levied with fines. Um, Standard Bank has received a fine of over $4.6 million. Um, and the, the two employees to a lesser extent. However, the CEO in Mozambique has also been barred from um, assuming any corporate positions uh, or management positions for the next six, year, six years um, within Mozambique at any local lenders. And more importantly, uh, Standard Bank Mozambique has now been barred from trading, doing foreign exchange trade for the next one year. Kalani, usually the big question in business is what is the variable of the day? It's still the violence. Absolutely. The violence is a big issue of the day. Pandemic has taken a backseat for now.